Hi, everybody. Oh, okay. Mm, there, there I am. Boy, did I look little and short. Okay. Hi, again. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, today's sermon is titled, just to get your attention, the Messiah's Paternity Test. And don't worry, you're gonna see what it's all about. Don't, don't worry, it's nothing sacrilegious. Um, but I hope that you receive a good message from this sermon and, uh, I pray that blessings of God are on you as we enter into this time of discovering new things about his word and old things about his word. So, the reading today from scripture is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 34 through 46. When the Pharisees heard that he, Jesus, had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? Now no one was able to give him an answer. Nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So you've probably noticed the first part of our gospel reading today is a familiar lesson. It's preached on often. Um, when asked which commandment in the law is the greatest, Jesus offered his twofold answer. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I know it's not easy, but I also know it gets preached on a lot. And there's a lot of excellent sermons on this piece of scripture, which reminds us to be completely and totally in love with God and to treat others the same way we want to be treated, with love. Granted, this is probably preached so often because we forget to obey these simple commandments. And we need to be reminded of them. But today we're just getting this, this short reminder. So please, for the love of God, be kind and obey his commands. Now what about that second part of the gospel lesson today? We rarely hear this section preached on. I know I've never preached on it, but after 12 years of pastoral ministry, I think it's time to just dig into this passage and discover why the Pharisees were so stumped and so silenced in their attempts to catch Jesus in an act of blasphemy. So to place the scene, Jesus decided it was his turn to ask the question. So he asked the Pharisees a question that would lead to the revelation of his identity as the Son of the Most High God. He asked them, What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? Here Jesus 
was presenting his opponents, we'll call them opponents, yeah, with a puzzle. But it wasn't intended to trap them or confuse them, although it probably did. That's what they had been trying to do to Jesus by drilling him with all of these questions. But instead, Jesus intended to, well, force these men to go, let go of their preconceived notions about what the Messiah ought to be. And then to come to a conclusion about Jesus that the Holy Scriptures and Jesus' own works of miracles required that they realize. Thinking this was the easiest question ever to answer, as the prophets had always been told the Messiah was to be a son of David, they replied as such. They were correct in their answer. The Messiah was to be a descendant of King David. Yes, everyone knows that. But then Jesus went on to show that that answer alone was only half correct. And a half correct answer to the most important question of all time is not an answer that leads to salvation. So then Jesus hit them with a real stumper as he referenced Psalm 110. It was written by King David, and he asked those gathered Pharisees, How is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? Excellent question. He's got him there. Think about it. A king does not refer to their own child or their descendant as their Lord. Right? So why would David, as he was filled with the Holy Spirit, writing a prophetic psalm refer to his own offspring as my Lord. Hmm. What the Pharisees couldn't figure out was David can call the Messiah Lord because he is not merely his son or his offspring, but also the Son of God who is exalted at the right hand of God. The Pharisees hadn't even imagined what the Apostle John wrote in the first chapter of his Gospel when he said, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's from John chapter 1, verse 14. So now the Pharisees, their heads are spinning. Oh my gosh, they don't understand. Does this mean that the Messiah is to be both man and God? This is a possibility they had never considered. That the Son of God has become a human like us. That he has lived in the midst of sinful humanity. And that he has revealed the grace of his Father towards those who believe in him. If we take David's words to be the words given to him by the Holy Spirit. And if we look at the miracles that Jesus performed. And we hear the words that Jesus spoke then we are forced to a conclusion. The only way that David could speak to his own human offspring and call him Lord would be if his offspring was more than a mere man. He would have to be both human and divine, sent to this earth 
to be born into the human family to be our Savior. And if that great revelation is true, then the greatest question that can possibly be asked, the one question that most reveals what is in the human heart, and the question that most determines one's eternal destiny, would have to be this. What do you think about the Messiah? What do you think about Jesus Christ? That is the question we must all ask ourselves. Who is he to you? Are you fulfilling your calling as one redeemed by his blood to submit your life to his bidding? Are you loving God with your whole being and loving others as you love yourself? What do you think of your Messiah? I think my Messiah is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. He is the most loving, forgiving, pure human being that there's ever been because he's not just human but also the second person of the Godhead and our very souls should rejoice in our salvation through his shed blood our constant celebration of this gift brings joy to the heaven and joy to our soul Praise be to God. And amen. May God be with you this day and all days. Amen.